All right. So real quick, man, like we're hopping on here episode two. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about today was like, should you wait till everything's perfect, right? To start a business, to start getting in shape, whatever the fuck it is you want to do in your life. Yeah. And as we're jumping on here, we got cords all over the place. We got laptops on top of chairs. I have cords going in front of me. You got cords going in front of you. We, we're tripping over top of each other. It's a goddamn disaster around here. But we're doing this shit anyway, right? So what do you think about people who say like, oh, I got to wait for my ducks to get in a row? <clears throat> you ever heard that before? Oh, dude. I mean, we hear it all the time, right? Uh, yeah. People wanting to start on Amazon, people wanting to start anywhere. And it's almost like... Uh, like I always t tell people about this, when you want to to start a business or when you want to like go to the gym, you know, people want to get brand new Nikes. They want to get brand new shirt. They want to get this. They want to get that. They want to sign up for the baddest gym. They want to blah, blah, blah. They want training. They want this. It's like, dude, just get your ass to the fucking gym. Yeah. You know, no like doubt. as you said, this whole setup, it's like it's all over the place. But it's like we have a message. We have an audience that wants to hear it. It's like get on fucking camera. Start talking, put it out there, and then like figure it out as you go, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, um, I, and I think we're all guilty of that, man. You know, like we mm -hmm. just recently moved, and so we're in a new town, right? And when we went to the gym here, we looked at a couple different gyms, and we were like trying to figure out which one we wanted to go to, which one has the best like sauna and like all these like extra little goodies, because I like that shit. You know, wellness is it's important. Um, but before going to the gym, I was like, oh man, I should get some new shoes. You know, yeah. I went and got new shoes for the gym. Yes. But would I have fucking gone to the gym in my old shoes? Absolutely. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. So there can be a mixture of both. It's like you can reward yourself for starting something new. OK, cool. You're going to do a podcast. Sweet. Go find yourself a nice new mic. Reward yourself with some good sound and clamp that shit to a coffee table and get going. <laughs> Make <laughs> right? sure the coffee table is being held by a bunch of books. So it a bunch of books. <laughs> yeah, we put a bunch of books. You guys can't see this. We put a bunch of books on the table to hold the table from flipping over because the mic is heavy. Like, it just shit doesn't matter, you know? There, there's a saying that I learned, uh, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago when I first started going away from really focusing on other people's businesses and corporate and, and working in those types of things and focusing on my own stuff. Um, it was like progress equals happiness. Yes. Right. It's, it's like the most famous common saying in entrepreneur space, but I think it's, it's so powerful that I actually have it on a sticky. It's in my, uh, my bag that I brought and I have that sticky in my bag. That's been in my bag and with my laptop now for like four years. Wow. So it always reminds me of that. Mm. Progress equals happiness. Yeah, what I always like to say is start where you are with what you have. Yeah. Um Love and it. the way like the way I started the online business, it was dude, I still remember I and I still have it here just for like to keep perspective. I have this like thick ass Toshiba laptop, it was it's literally this thick. It was probably like 30 pounds heavy, and mm. it was all cracked up. The screen was cracked, you know, it was all fucked up. I went and spent maybe like $20, $40 to get a brand new screen. It's like seven, eight years ago, six, seven years ago. And that's it. It got online. It did the research. It did the typing. It did all that. I was like, fuck it. I'll just start here. And as I was driving for Uber, as I was like washing dishes and all that at Hilton hotels, I would literally have my laptop with me. And like between between rides and Uber, while I'm waiting for the next ride, I would pop it open. I would get my uh, my uh, my phone's uh, hotspot. I would connect it to the computer, and then I start you know researching for products or learning tutorials or whatever. And I see a lot of people get stuck in wanting to get started and not knowing where to start. But they want to know everything. I want to know. I want to do more research. Three more months five more months. I want to research this thing. I want to research that thing. And so I want to ask you a question. Why do you think that is? Why do you think people get stuck in that wheel of, I want to know everything rather than I know enough, let me get started and kind of like figure it out. Because, because I think we both can agree that there is like two sides of this. There's completely going on to like, you know, starting something without any fucking knowledge. But then also the other side of like, I want to know everything before I get started. What are your thoughts on those two things? I think I think it comes down to um, the way we were raised and the way uh, 
society has everyone thinking they need to be perfect. I think people are scared to fail. Mm. And um, when you have a fear inside you of failure, maybe when you're a kid, it's like your parents said to you, like if you're, if your parents said to you when you were a kid, you can do anything. You're amazing. You get a trophy for fucking 19th place. If you were brought up in that shit, you basically have been ingrained in your system that like, I can't fail. Like I'm not, nothing fails. I don't fail. So your okay. identity is that. Now, if you go off and you try to do something new like Amazon or um, chase after some dream that you just have, and you're like, oh my God, I wish I could do that thing. I have that dream. Deep down inside you, you're like, yeah, but I might fail. And if I fail, that's not congruent with who I am and who I was brought up to be in my own mind. And I think the, the, the difference is when you flip into like, just get started, just like this podcast, or just like how we started our businesses, just get going, start moving forward. You flip into the mindset of failing fast is the goal. Mm. Fail as fast as you fucking can. You know what I mean? Like how many times did you fail when you first started your shit? I mean, my Amazon business was business number eight, BJK University's business number nine. The seven prior businesses all failed. Yeah. Um, but I had to fail, you know, seven times for number eight to, to get started. But see, here's the other thing, because so I hear you when you were talking about um, as you're growing up, maybe everyone was telling you to um, like, you know, you get a trophy for being 19th place. You get this, you get that. You can't fail and stuff like that, because there's also a fine balance there. There is a fine balance between um preparing you for what's out there but also like that that like uh, that focus like keeping mm. your focus on winning keeping your focus on learning keeping your focus on um on like regardless what happens you can always find positivity you can always find the good in any situation because i think a lot of people also they beat themselves up too much when they do fail and then they're like well i failed and this is a terrible experience and I'm a failure. You know, like I could have done that to myself seven years ago when my restaurant burned down and I could have said, well, I'm just a failure. That's it. And I did for a little while, but then I went and I said, okay, I failed great, but what's the lesson that I can learn from this, right? What can I learn from this? What can I take from this to go one kind of to the next thing? What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on like, yes, it is true that, we should be like, we should get prepared for what's out there. But also there is this other thing of like, that could actually be maybe a good thing where mm -hmm. I can learn to like always be, have that positive mindset and focus on the good rather than the negative. Yeah, totally, man. So I think two things, right? Number one, like, I, again, I'm not a parent hoping to be soon, but not yet. But I do know one thing for fucking sure. If you're telling your kids, you, you can't fail. You can do whatever you want. Like you can be an NBA superstar and you're talking to someone who's five foot zero and they're not athletic in any way. It's like, no, you can't dude. You cannot. Okay. Mm. So like, it's more about congratulating and encouraging effort. In my opinion, it's like nice effort, great, um, attempt. If you keep trying this hard at things in life, you will go far. It failed, but you tried really hard and you learned some things. Take those lessons and keep putting in that same effort in the next, the next shot. And if you keep doing that, you're failing forward. So I think that's the way um, if you're raising kids or if you're thinking for yourself through your business mind, it's like do your best, learn, and then just keep going, regardless if you fail or succeed in that mission. As far as... Um, like the perspective of positivity and stuff, <laughs> you, you know, like, have you ever been to Bali? I have not. Okay. So we go to Bali all the time. We used to, for sure. We're going to go again this year. Probably love Bali. It's one of my favorite places. Super nice energy there. It's a very spiritual place. There's nice temples. The people are nice. The food's great. It's beautiful. It's cheap as fuck. You can have a dope villa and a pool and you just live in the dream for very cheap. Of course, holiday wouldn't want to live there long-term, but, um, one of the things that's funny is when you go there, 
like you'll go to like a yoga retreat or a silent retreat or something like this. And they have all this types of stuff there. And you'll bump into people that, you know, they're manifesting on a mountainside, right? Mm. They're like, I'm positive. Everything's positive, bro. You know, it's like the dude pulls up in a scooter with the surfboard and he's like, man, everything's positive, bro. Everything's positive. I'm like, yeah, I, I love that. I respect it. And then you hear them talk about like abundance and, and, and affirmations and stuff, which I'm a massive fan of all of that. But understanding that the human brain can't comprehend negative means that you have to have a choice in how you go, of, go ahead and, and, and go into this manifestation world, which is really what we're talking about at the end of the day. So the dude who's sitting on the, the hillside in Bali, just thinking positively about money, then he goes back and he's got like three grand in the bank total, right? Thinking more about money positively goes back three grand in the bank. Never going to get money, never going to get anything that way. If you just sit at home thinking about being in shape, you're not going to fucking be in shape. Are you right? Like I wish imagine if everything you thought about came true. Imagine all the fucking 13 year old boys in the world, right? If everything they thought about came true, it'd be a fucking disaster out here. So right. it's not about, thinking about something and always seeing the positive it's about understanding there's a choice between the perspective you're giving your subconscious mind so for example your brain can't decipher negative from positive right so for example let me say to you at home right now don't think of a red car don't think of a red car what did you think of? It's the first thing you're thinking of. Fucking red car for sure. For yeah. me, Ferrari. Love Ferraris, right? There's a Ferrari shop just down the street. Every single day I drive past that. Bzzzed. Ferrari me, right? But thinking about it won't do it. What you focus on expands. So if you're failing forward and you're focusing on the lessons, the network that you created in that failure, you know, um, all, all the things you pulled from it, that's a positive perspective on the outcome of the failure. You know what I mean? If you focus on the fuck me, I failed. Shit, I am a failure. And you label yourself that identity, which is a whole nother can of worms if you want to go into identity stuff. You label yourself as a failure. Now your body and your mind and your cells are just going to focus on all the negative shit that happened. And you're just going to get more of it. You're going to focus on the obstacles. You're going to focus on the problems. You're going to get more and more of these obstacles and problems. Yes. Versus just taking what you got, good and bad, objectively looking at it, and then looking for solutions and focusing on, okay, well, that didn't work because of this. How can I improve it? How can I change it? How can I tweak it? Who can I reach out to that knows more than me? Where is there a mentor on this shit that can help me? You know what I mean? Like, have you ever got to a place where you were failing, 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 and then you were like, I bet there's somebody in the world who's done this shit before me pretty well. Maybe, just possibly there's another human out there who's done this shit, right? If you ever got yeah. to a point where you just said, I'm going to go find someone and you did, and you were like, holy shit, should have done that earlier. All the fucking time. Yeah, in everything, right? All the fucking time. Yeah. yeah. And it's, a, it's an interesting point that you bring up because literally yesterday it happened um i was uh we were changing to go out uh, for my uh, uh birthday dinner and my wife comes up and and she's talking to one of her best friends which i absolutely love she's a sweetheart you know uh especially when we first got married me and Rueda, she was like always you know there. like she, they were very close and and she was just a great person uh she's a single uh single mom and um and she recently she had started seeing someone right and, um, you know, very cool guy, but Rueda used to always tell her, and I used to always tell Rueda, I'm like, babe, stop fucking saying that to her. She'd be like, you know, he's a cool guy, and I like him, just not for you. Mm. And I'm like, dude, that's fucked up. Like, you know, <laughs> you're supposed to be, she's like, but okay, but if I'm a good friend, like, I should tell her how I feel, you know? Before we know it, yesterday, she calls, uh, and, and she's talking to Rueda, and she's like, we broke up two weeks ago. You know, mm -hmm. some shit happened. He like got drunk, got crazy and like whatever that ended the the relationship. He's not just for me. <laughs> He's there. Yeah, for sure. Right. <laughs> but the funny thing is we were in the car driving and Rueda goes to me, you know, what's crazy? I was like, what? She's like, literally for the last two days, I've been thinking of this girl. 
And I've been saying, I haven't talked to her in like two, three weeks. I need to call her. I need to call her. And today she freaking called me. I was like, huh, isn't that interesting? She's like, yeah, I don't know why that always happens. And it's like, just like what you just said, it's like what you focus on expands. Our, our brains are a two million year mechanism that was created with a negative bias. It's always looking for what's wrong because its job, it's not to keep you happy. Its job is to protect you. That's literally its, it's, its own job. Happiness is your job. It's not your brain's job. Yeah. So your brain is always looking for what's wrong. And this is why we think of like the dumbest shit ever at the weirdest times. Excuses, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, bro. Like I remember some, like sometimes I'd be standing on the balcony and I'd just look and be like, if I fall right now and make it on that car, I, you know, I probably won't, you know, <laughs> and like you just start thinking of these dumbass things, you know, yeah. it's our jobs to focus on the positive. So there is negative out there everywhere. It's our job to take this and say, the seizure happened to me eight months ago and I could have crawled in a ball and said, you know, poor me. Oh my God, why is this happening? I can't do this. I can't do that. But then I started looking at the positives. What's coming out of this? What am I like? What's whatever you believe in? I'm not trying to get religious here. God, universe, whoever you believe in, it doesn't matter. But it's like, what is it trying to teach you in this moment? What's the thing that you're trying to learn here mm -hmm. that you can take to the next thing? I mean, haven't you had experiences like those where you just like took it and, and, and completely took a complete negative and changed it into complete positive? Oh, fuck, dude, all the time. Well, you, you know that awesome book? Um, I can't remember the author, The Obstacle is the Way. Yes. Right? It's like, it's talking about being grateful for the obstacles and misfortunes that come along because they're a sign of growth. Yes. If you don't have any obstacles in your life and some like failure, negative shit going on, that's like, oh man, why did that have to happen today? If you don't have that happening, it means you're just sitting in this comfort zone and you're just like idling like a car, again, that red car we're talking about, it's just, you're idling, you're idling, you're neutral, you're not going anywhere. He's not gonna see any bumps in the road or like have any corners or have to navigate some shit. He's not gonna wash his car, he's not gonna do nothing. Just sits there, right? If you're gonna go on a trip and a journey from where you are now to where you wanna be, maybe you wanna be a better father, a better wife, son, daughter, provider for your family, whatever it may be, you have to drive that car somewhere. And there's going to be obstacles, there's gonna be police, there's gonna be all sorts of shit along the way. And if you take those obstacles as lessons, so again, we'll, we'll keep going with this metaphor. Say you're like just today, my wife and I drove, we live here in Switzerland. We drove to Italy uh, just for a cup of coffee and, and get some lunch and stuff. And as we drove there, it's this very windy road. It's like kind of near Lake Como and it's very windy. There's these tunnels. It's beautiful, but it's a sketchy road. Like it's narrow as fuck, right? Anyone who's been around Europe knows the roads are super narrow. There's rocks falling from the mountain, the lakes on the other side. There's very little like safety precautions around tunnels. And we were going pretty fast. I put our car in sport mode and I was like having some fun with it. Yeah. If I go around a corner a little bit too quick, that's a lesson for me. I'm like, oh shit, I need to slow down a little bit here. Or next time I come on this road, I'm going to know that corner is coming. I'm going to be a little bit more focused on the outcome of that corner because I had the lesson, right? So has there been a time in my life when you had a negative and turn it into a positive, there's so many, I literally can't even think of one. But I do know that when you come across these things, the first thing I think of is what I focus on here is going to determine how I feel. Yes. Right? And your thoughts become words, your words become actions, your, your actions become habits, and your habits basically define your character. Yes. Right? And so the first thing you have to think of when you're coming across something that's like, oh, why did that have to happen? You have to think, okay, how is this good? Where is the good? Where's the lesson? Where's the thing I can grow? And as soon as you go down that road, you're actually grateful for the lesson immediately. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm actually glad that happened. Yep. Right. Over the last couple of years, we've been through all sorts of ups and downs with the company. Yep. Right. And every time you're like, oh, shit. And then 30 seconds later, you're like, oh, yeah, sweet, actually. Yep. Learn this, learn that. You know what I mean? Yep. When have you come across a time when it was 
you you thought shit was hitting the fan. I, I, I here's the best one I can come to. From, sorry, I gotta go. I remember what it is now. The best one ever for me. When the island closed in Asia and we lost all of our businesses and all of our income, I thought it was the end of the world. Yep. Looking back on that now, it was literally the best thing that ever happened because it forced me to get super uncomfortable and try something else, which was building an online business. And I'm super happy I did. This new chapter is amazing. That chapter was amazing too. Just happy that it forced me to grow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What about you? You know, so there is uh, there is uh, a few months ago, I started this thing where every month I have a quote that, that I live by for that whole month. And I write it down on my on my whiteboard and I just remind myself every single day. Sweet. So the quote for I think it was like two, three months ago that like just keeps coming back to me and it like stuck with me is thank you, life, for being difficult, because it is through difficulties that we learn and grow. Hmm. Right. And it's kind of like, I don't know who who said this other quote of like, don't ask for the obstacle to be less or something like that. Ask yeah. for yourself to be better or tougher. Mm. Like tough things will always happen. Problems will always happen. And in fact, problems are signs of growth. If you don't have new problems, you're not growing. And if you're not growing, you're not progressing. If you're not progressing, you're not being fulfilled because this exactly. is how we are fulfilled as humans, right? And so, like the personal personal experience, very simple. I'll kind of keep it, you know, based on on where we are right now. In 2020, when we, you know, we had just been working together for for a few months. I don't know if you remember, we were trying to scale BJK University, and Facebook shut down uh, the the like the ads manager or whatever. Mm. And literally woke up one day, though that whole part of the the income generation was gone. There yeah. was nothing. We woke up from a seven-figure company to zero overnight. Mm. And then what that did, it forced me to learn about this new thing called Instagram influencer marketing. And this is probably how many of you guys have found out about me and BJK University and what we're doing because we blew up on there, mm. right? And then now, a few months ago, Instagram shut us down. And then this is how this kind of got started because we've been talking about this podcast thing for like how long now, you know, yeah, it's been, year, it's been man. like, exactly. Right. It's been like, dude, every time we talk, there's always some awesome things. We just need to like hit record and like put it out there somewhere. <laughs> and then it took this catastrophic thing to happen to where it's like, Hey man, look, let's re-strategize about how we put content out there. You know, our shorts and stuff like that, that we put on you on Instagram are great. And I love them, you know, they're entertaining, but it's like, I want to have a conversation like this, an organic conversation where I know that there's going to be a bunch of gold that's going to come out of here that we can put out and put it on a medium where people are going to actually follow. So again, there is always negatives that are going to happen, but it's all about the things that you focus on because where focus goes, energy flows. Boom. And with that said, I want to kind of take a little bit of a transition into getting started. I mean, we're we're kind of in this in this whole topic of getting started, and I want to get your thoughts. Yeah. On. So now we covered getting started. Just fucking start where you are with what you have. Just go for it. Get it done. Mm. But then, what do you think a little further than that about like having a plan B? You know, something mm -hmm. that I hear all the time, people talking about, you know. I have this cushion. I have this net that Brutal. I can fall back on. Like, I'm pretty sure you've heard it in the sales world. People saying, well, you know, I'm going to school, but I'm also starting this business and I want to get the degree because in case if the business doesn't work, at least I have something to fall back on. Oh, fall back on. That's what I'm looking for. Mm. Falling back on plan. What no. do you think of that? I think it's a fucking massive trap. Massive okay. trap. Why is that? because if you're not all in, you're not all in. And if you're not all in, you won't get there mm. straight up. Like you will not get to where you want to go, whether it's being a professional athlete, an actor, a writer, you know, uh, a yoga teacher, an online business operator, a husband, a father, a mother. If you're not like all in on that journey, you're not going to get where you want to go because you're, again, your focus isn't focused, right? So having a plan B, having a fallback plan, 
man, the worst thing I hear people say is like, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to do that. If this <laughs> yeah. doesn't work out, I'm going to do this. You're like, mm -hmm. dude, you've already lost. Yes. Because you already told yourself, if it doesn't work out, we talked about it earlier, your brain doesn't understand negative words. If this doesn't work out, all your brain hears is this isn't working out. Right. Right. I'm failing at this. Okay, cool. Well, you've already written your destiny. Good job. So what's that backup plan then? Right. It's like, you might as well just fucking go straight to it, dude. Right. Skip this journey and go directly to your backup plan. But you probably have a backup for the backup for the backup. So you're just going to be in this like idle zone of just bullshit forever. And you're never going to get where you want to go. So I, I know from my own experience, the best thing that I can do for myself, if I want to win at something and do well, is intentionally put myself in a corner. So I, an example of this I can give you is when we left Southeast Asia, after losing our businesses and our money and losing pretty much everything, I had a couple grand in cash. After I sold shares in like our nightclubs and stuff, I had very little money, like less than 5k. I had a credit card with 6k credit on it. And that's all I had. That's it. Nothing else. That's fucking ridiculous. Got a young family, a wife, and I had a plan. <laughs> and you had been working for a while. It's not like you, you know, yeah, you well, that was after there for a while. That was that was eight years of grinding hard, man. Like, right. yeah, it's you know, it, it's brutal. But anyway, okay. But my plan is I'm gonna go and move to a new country, Europe. It's expensive, way more expensive than Southeast Asia. It's like not even the same world. I'm gonna move to the center of Rome, big ass metropolis. The euro is pretty steep. I don't know anybody there. We don't speak the language. We're going to move there with this little bit of money. And I told my wife on the plane, on the plane, when we were sitting in economy at the back, squished in with the chickens, you know. And by the way, we had our dog with us. Spent most of my money on the dog passports <laughs> to bring our dog with us. Um, I told my wife on the plane, I was like, I don't know how we're going to do this when we get there. Like, I don't know the how. I don't know it. I was like, mm. if, if we can find a cheap Airbnb that has internet, I'm going to open my computer, just like you, an old little laptop that I was using on the island. It had sand all over it. It barely worked. So yeah, I'm going to open this computer up, and I'm, I know that there's ways to make money on the internet. And I've, I've been networking for the last couple of months, learned a couple of things. And I'm going to find a way for us to make enough money to number one, live in Europe and for you to never have to work a fucking game in your life. Yes. And she was like, whoa, okay, right? So she trusted me and that was my promise. And so I had this massive why inside me. Yes. Massive. It's like, I am fucking providing for my family and there's nothing stopping me from this shit. I'm gonna land and I'm gonna get in that Airbnb and figure this shit out. There's no plan B, man. If you go in there, I knew that I, I had nowhere to go. I was in a corner in a new town, in a new country with no money. And I only had one way to create income for myself on purpose. If I hadn't moved to British Columbia, Canada, where I'm from originally, right? I grew up in Canada, BC, my whole life, a skier, blue collar family. If I had moved there, it would be very easy for me to integrate into society and get a job at a hotel or manage some nightclubs or something. My wife could run a spot very easily. And that would be a trap for me because I would have that plan be there waiting. Be like, right. oh, if the internet fails, I can just do this shit. We intentionally went somewhere completely foreign for that reason. Yes. And when I put myself in that corner, I had no, op I had no other choice than to just smash it and just get after it. And what I did was I failed fast and I did everything I could possibly do under the sun on the internet until I figured out something that I enjoyed and I was good at that made me money. So to rattle off a few things, if you're watching this at home, I'm sure you've probably dabbled in this. I Googled literally how to make money online. Have you ever done that? <laughs> probably, right? It's like, <laughs> how do you make money online? I did affiliate marketing. I mean, you know, when you met me, I had like 35 affiliate offers I was trying to sell to no audience. I was like, ridiculous. I had all these funnels and offers and I didn't have a fucking audience. It was ridiculous. Then I had MLM. I had like 20 MLM companies I was involved in. I had like teams of three. Like I wasn't going anywhere because I didn't, I didn't focus. I had too many things happening. 
We yes. built a crypto course. I was learning how to trade cryptocurrencies. I was just doing all of these different things. Number one, because I was just committed to figure it out. And number two, because I knew I didn't have any plan B. I had to figure it out, you know? And then I bumped mm -hmm. into you, learned about Amazon, learned about what you were doing with BJKU. I learned about sales and how to enroll people and how to help people get started, get over their fears and push past limiting beliefs so that they can step into their power and make it happen for themselves, which I love doing. And then I was like, oh, that's the thing. I love it. It makes good money. I can work with my friend as a business partner. I'm going to go all in on that. And then I dumped everything. And that's my, that's all I focus on now. Yes. And by the way, three years later, there's still no fucking plan B, bro. Right? Like I'm still in a country. I don't speak the language here. I can't go fucking around a hotel right now. There is no plan B. And that's on purpose. It's intentional. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Did you have a plan B when you started? You know, I uh, the thing that whenever I hear this, I always think of um, of this story. It's an ancient story. Uh, I don't know when it was from the 1600s or something like that. I I don't know. I I don't. I I'm gonna botch the story, but it was <laughs> this this general that took his uh, his uh, troops over to conquer this this island or this kingdom or something like that. Again, this is like in the in the, the the 1600s or something like that. So they land on this island and they realize that the enemy that they're about to go conquer is like four or five times the size of their army, right? Mm -hmm. And he's looking around and his troops are like shaking. So his troops are like, well, fuck, our ships are right there. We're about to get back on our ships and get our asses the fuck out of here, right? <laughs> Plan so B, plan does, B, plan B. Exactly. <laughs> right. So what he does is he orders their ships to be burned down. Yeah. Like have, this is where the burning the ships comes from, Love right? It. He yeah. orders the ships to be burned down. So now it's like the only way out of here is through these motherfuckers on the other side. Mm. Now, I don't know how the, the story ends in it <laughs> and what actually happens, but it's like burning the ships, bro. You yeah. know, like almost Every person that has made it in any, you know, levels of success, and I'm not talking about just financial success. This could be having an incredible family, having amazing relationships, have built something of 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 that's worth talking about. There, you're never going to hear anyone saying two things. You're never going to hear anyone saying, "I also wanted to do this and this and that." Number one. And number two, you're also never going to hear them talking about how they also did five other things while they were doing this one thing. Yeah. You know, there is this uh, there is this uh, um, illustration. I've showed it to you guys. Um, I, I saw it from Sam Ovens right one time. And mm -hmm. it was like, I don't know if, if, if my camera is going to pick it up or not, but it was like it was like uh, this energy, you know, so. I'll, I'll kind of draw this up here and hopefully guests could see it, but it's like source of energy and attention, you know, like if yeah. you, I don't know if you guys can see this a little white, maybe get closer. Closer. I don't know. Nah, it's just well, blurry. All right. So, so what it is, it's pretty much, it's, a, it's a source of energy, right? And when you put all of your, when you put all of your eggs in one basket, and I know that society says not to do that, when you put all of your eggs in one basket and put all of your energy into one thing, you can take that one thing for long, for, for you know, you could go as wide, as long, you can go as far. But when you put a little bit of energy, you only have 24 hours in a day. And if you're spending two hours on trying to figure this out, you know, two hours trying to figure this out, two hours trying to figure this out, your energy is divided, right? Hmm. Not one thing is getting all of your energy, getting all of your time. So you're going to be half-assing all of those things. And this is where it's important when you're first starting. And I know some people are like, but Elon Musk has seven companies and they're all multi-billion dollar companies. <laughs> yeah, but don't look at Elon Musk's 20th chapter. Look at Elon Musk's first and second chapter. Yeah, He started one company, he sold it, started the second company, sold it, started three companies and grew those, started another, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, he's worth two hundred billion dollars, but that he didn't get there by starting seven companies. He he got there by not having a plan B, going all in, and just fucking burning the ships and going all for it. Now, one thing that I heard you talk about, and I want to kind of uh, um, uh, uh, come back to, is 
I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly. Geographical location change. Yo, man, massive. Because that has worked really well for me. Like mm -hmm. literally when 18 year old kids come to me and say, what should I do? I'm like, get the fuck out of your parents' house. Fuck yeah. You know? 100%. And like you just said it multiple times, you said we were in Asia. Now, obviously, you're not from Asia. You're originally from Canada, yeah. right? So you had moved to Asia to 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 for a new opportunity. When that didn't yeah. work, you moved to Europe. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not very good at, 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 at you know <laughs> at the world map, but I'm yeah. pretty sure those are not next to each other, right? <laughs> pretty far, yeah. And then you went to Italy, and then from there you went to Switzerland. So yeah. Can we can we spend some time on geographical location change? Yeah, and why is that important, and how how is that important? Yeah, man, for sure. Well, I think your environment is very important, right? Yeah, the the people you surround yourself with, right? Like you're you're sitting here um, talking to people who have very small circles. Would you agree with me when I say we have a small circle of people who you actually confide in, take advice from, work with? And then, of course, you have a large network, but like a small circle. Your environment is tight and curated, right? Yes. So your environment, uh, geographically, the easiest way to switch it up is, is to move, right? Now, you're not always moving because like you have to or because you want to. There could be various reasons, you know, like when we moved from Singapore we were working in corporate hospitality. I worked at the Fairmont. Uh, my wife worked at the Mandarin Oriental. So we were like corporate uh, hospitality professionals. And so we worked there for a few years and we just felt like we didn't enjoy the corporate life, right? I, I, I got picked up every fucking day at 4.45 a.m., right? The car would pick me up at 4.45. I'd be shaving at 4.30, getting clean shaved every single fucking day. I had a rash from shaving every day because I had to be perfectly shaved. It drove me nuts. 4.45, wake up, uh, pick up at the hotel until like 7 or 8. Come home, sleep, rinse and repeat six days a week. Corporate life. So we were doing that for a few years and we both looked at each other one day and we were like, man, we're not happy. Like, we're not happy here. We're, we're, it's cool. The culture is nice. The food's great. Singapore is an amazing city. If you get a chance to go to Singapore, it's fucking awesome. But the corporate lifestyle is not for us. Nor did we enjoy climbing the corporate ladder and the politics that came with it, right? We're too entrepreneurial. We're too innovative to be in that box. So we looked at each other one day and we were like, man, like, what do, you, what do we want to do here? We said, well, we've been going on holidays to all these places, Bali, Singapore, uh, Philippines, Thailand, you know, we were like, man, there's hotels and stuff everywhere over there. We could go consult at these beach resorts and maybe like live a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so we did, we moved there, changed the environment and it totally switched up how we lived our life. I went from a 445 car pickup in a suit to board shorts and like, you know, friendship bracelets and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like complete 180 just yeah. because of the environment. Yes. Right. And then after that environment, uh, we, we did our stuff there. We were there a really long time, had an amazing time, lots of amazing friends, super amazing memories. If you've ever seen that movie, the beach, just picture that, but better. Okay. When it was time to change industries and go on the internet, I felt that I needed a new environment to do it in. I wanted to be challenged, right? And that's why we were like Europe. And so we went to Rome and then we went to this other city in Italy and we changed the environment to get away from comfort and into like plan A is all I can do now and let's focus on that shit. And now we've recently moved to Switzerland. So why did we do that? Italy was very comfortable. We were doing well there. We moved to Switzerland because we're looking to level up uh, as far as like family dynamics and things go like this. And the difference between Italy and Switzerland when it comes to quality of life is not even in the same ballpark, right? The, the healthcare system, the schools, um, the public services, just literally every aspect of society um, in Switzerland is very high level. Italy, I love Italy. It's an amazing place, but it has a lot of downsides. So again, we changed environment. 
And every time I change environment, I level up every single time without fail. I mean, you changed environments, right? You were living in San Diego and then you moved to Miami. What, like what happened there? You went to Miami, didn't know anybody, right? People ask me all the time, oh, must have been taxes why you moved to mm. uh, to Miami, right? Because, you know, state tax in the U.S., uh, California has 11 to 13 percent. It depends your income bracket. Miami, uh, Florida has none. Mm. And that was probably reason number like six or seven or something like that, although my tax bill is seven figures. Yeah. The reason why I moved was exactly what you just said, was because it's kind of like that, that it, like it's the cliche saying of like, the definition of insanity is doing the same exact thing and expecting a completely different result. Mm. Right. I was, I, I had half of my, half of my life. I had spent it in San Diego. My family was five minutes away. My in-laws were six minutes away. All of my buddies were there. We would hang out every week. And then I looked at my life and I looked at what my outcome, the outcome that I was trying to generate in life was, and it was building a meaningful, large institution that changed the world. And then I would look at, I love my family and friends, but every time I hang out with my brother and sister and, and parents, we're talking about, you know, why Susie did this and why, how this guy did that and politics in Iraq and blah, blah, blah. Whenever I hang out with my buddies on their days off, they're playing video games and we're smoking hookah and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, well, how the fuck, if this is my circle, how the fuck am I going to build an institution that's going to change the world? Like it just, they don't add up. It just doesn't make any sense. And so I was like, I need to, I need a different environment. And so I started kind of getting, you know, in contact with like, you know, local masterminds and stuff like that. But then I would still go back to this. Like there was no escape from this. And this was like two, three days a week. It wasn't like once a month or something like that. This was the life that I lived. And mm. I'm like, I need to remove myself. This is why they say you are the average of the five people that you hang around. If your buddies are getting drunk and playing video games and going out and, and clubbing or whatever, it's like, dude, this is what you're going to do. You can't expect to fucking build a multi-billion dollar company. If you have, you know, if you're trying to build an incredible, have be an incredible father or mother and have an incredible marriage or be a great girlfriend or boyfriend, but you have a bunch of buddies that are single or they have like, that are been, that have been divorced three times or whatever. It's like, well, that's what you're expected to do, yeah. you know? Mm. And so changing that environment first put me in a place like if you guys haven't been to Miami dude it is it's like the 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 entrepreneur epicenter yeah right it it's like there's masterminds everywhere there's shit everywhere and people are like wanting to become something people are wanting to do something in their lives right and so it's really important to like to to push out of those boundaries because nothing great happens in that comfort zone but another thing that I wanted to to touch on that I like I wrote down what you said. You said you lived in you were in Asia, you went to Italy, and then you went to Switzerland. And every time you've moved, you've 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 leveled up your standards. Yeah. And this is a direct quote from Tony Robbins. I know. Shout out Tony. This is like sponsored by Tony Robbins. You know, <laughs> every day, man. Um, every day. Exactly. Yeah. But he says to level up your life, you got to level up your standards. Totally. What are your thoughts on that? Fucking spot on, man. And and the, the thing that's crazy is that you can define your standards for yourself or you can allow them to be defined by the environment and the people around you. And the other saying that we always talk about in our meetings with our team and with the students is that you get what you tolerate. Mm -hmm. So... If you're setting yourself, if you don't have standards or low standards and you tolerate that, you're going to continue to get that. Whether it's from your team, your friends, your family, your environment, students, whatever it may be, you get what you tolerate. So standards is something that I'm always working on. I think it's like a work in progress that never ends. I don't know if there's ever a top. I don't think there is. I think it's like a constant growth and then you die kind of thing. Um, I, it's hard to put into words, you know, it's like, it's like an internal sort of compass where if you miss something, 
do you get into the habit of missing it and being okay with it? Or do you find the pattern and adjust so that you can stay on standard, right? So like at the end of every day, I know a lot of our team goes through lenses. And at the end of every day, there is a pattern finder. So it's like, how did you do today? Rate yourself, discipline. There's this long list, right? About 15 things. Health, wealth, spirituality, discipline, you know, family. And you go one to 10 and you circle it. And you have to be very you know, very truthful with yourself. I mean, you're just, it's just you and yourself. Why the fuck are you going to lie to yourself? So it's like, oh, you know, I can say today when I do mine today, I'll give myself on health today. I'll give myself a one or a two, right? Didn't go to the gym today, slept in on purpose. Um, didn't stretch, not going to stretch because we're on the podcast now. I'm not even going to get home until late. You know what I mean? Like making excuses for myself in real time right now literally, but I'm recognizing it. And when I get home and I do my lenses, I'm going to fucking put a zero there. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the week, right? Today is Thursday on Sunday. I'm going to go back and I'm going to see the week and I'm going to see if I see a couple of zeros or ones on health, that's me recognizing a pattern where I'm slipping and my standard is dropping and I'm observing it. And then I make myself a plan for next week. And I have some like must do's to get myself back to my standard or even to exceed it. The plus one rule right? So if I'm like zero, zero, zero on health for four days, it's like next week when I write down my plan for the week, I have hyper focus on health. Like I'm going to the gym fucking six days a week. I'm going to fast on Wednesday. I'm going to make sure that I walk 15,000 steps a day, not 10,000, right? Or at least do my very best to hit those. Again, you can't beat yourself up for missing things. I don't believe in this, like, just get it done, bro. Like you have to honor your feelings and where you're at, but you also have to hold yourself to standards and keep pushing forward. That's why we talked about progress is happiness. Okay. So you had a zero health on a couple of days. Cool. Next week, I'm going to fix that up and I'm going to have a couple of five, sixes and a 10 and a 10 and a nine and a 10. There's some progress. I can look back on my quarterly review and be like, okay, the first couple of weeks were shitty, but man, did I pick it up at the end? I feel good about myself. Mm. My standards are still where they need to be. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, what do you do? You, what do you have in your life that is like a standard or standards where you feel like this shit's just not dropping? Like I'm not going below here. Or if I do, I need to recognize it immediately and, and get back into gear. Something around health or your family or business. <laughs> So something that I think is very important that a lot of people are not um, are not accustomed to is planning, because mm -hmm. that's kind of what I heard and what you were saying is planning and in, and I don't know if that's the right word Inten intentionality like being intention about anything that you do right yeah. and then being aware. Mm -hmm. So, like, I know for me it's true and it's probably true for you as well. A few years ago, when I actually started creating goals for the year. I'm not talking about laundry lists like what, you know, 99.9% .9 of, of, uh, of the humanity does. December 31st. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like this laundry list and then, you know, you drop it by like January 7th, you know, yeah. because it's like it's just too complicated. It's too much, too many things. And whenever I became very like strict when it came to goal setting and then following up with those and then chunking them down, mm -hmm. I also realized that my life started improving in all aspects of life. And up until last year, it was always finances. But, you know, as of last year, kind of things have changed and shifted for me. And so this year, I've, I've you know, uh, since my seizure last May, I've created five pillars of success. And that's wealth, which includes business, wealth, health, wealth, health, relationships, uh, gratitude. Um, and, uh, and, and what I do is I try to have a goal for each one of those and then have measures mm. to uh, to keep myself accountable for each one of them. Something that I have learned from you is weekly reviews. This is something that I had never done and I you know learned it from you a few months ago and now I do it every single time. So my you know my thing is I ask myself at the end of each week on Sundays usually, I ask myself five questions and one of them is, what am I gonna do next week? that's going to move me 1% mm. 
closer to the outcome of each area of those five goals that I have, right? Mm. So these are the five goals. What am I going to do to simply get 1% closer? And a question that I actually asked, so this is something that I started implementing uh, uh, about a, a month and a half ago. It, the very first thing that I do when my eyes open, I ask myself, what is one thing I'm going to do today that's going to get me closer to any of my goals? Hmm. And I immediately start, like answers start showing up everywhere, right? And it's either of something that I planned the, the day before that I know I, I need to do, or it's like this morning, it was what is one thing that I'm going to do to get me closer to my goals? And it was be fully present in the podcast with Aaron today. You know, make sure that I'm fully present, that I'm really delivering the value, that I'm really like just thinking of the person that's watching this and thinking of myself seven years ago and saying, what would Bashar seven years ago want to hear from me right now? Let mm -hmm. me put it all out on the table. Nice. What are some things, what are some, has planning changed your life or how has planning changed your life, I guess? Oh, dude, planning changes everything, man. You have to have a plan. So... Again, when I transitioned online and I was scared and in fear and I was like, okay, I'm going to start this business. I've never done this before. I'm in a corner. I need to make money for the family. Plan B, fuck that. I had to build a plan, right? I had to build a plan. So my plan was, yeah, like you say, you have, where do I see myself in a year, right? Again, we, we talked about this on the podcast last time. It's like values, What's the person I want to be and where do I see myself? Where do I want to be in similar pillars, right? Health, wealth, spirituality, family is a big one. And so putting that on paper, looking at it and being like, I want to be this person who has these things accomplished and that's where I'm at. And then you're going to chunk it backwards. And I like to chunk it into, well, before we go into chunking, a side note, we always talk about your why. You have to know why you want these things first. Right? Without yes. the why, there's no drive at all. So it's like, but why do I want them? Okay, you have the why. Now let's break down the actual goal process. You want to chunk it backwards. So you chunk it into quarters and they have to be measurable, right? Like you said, you measure your goals. So it's like how much of that goal is going to get accomplished each quarter or a portion of it each quarter, a percentage of it. And what are the activities I need to do each week, each day, to actually move the needle and you literally write that shit down right we have our own bjku workbook that we we built right to help our students and help our team build this process out and when you can see it on paper and you're like that's where i want to be this is the quarterly action things i need to get done these are the weekly okay i wake up in the morning and i look at it and i go okay well this week i needed to you know my let's just use an example right i'm sure a lot of you out there uh, want to be in better shape. Probably 99% of humans wish they were in better shape, right? I was like, okay, I want to be, you know, 180 pounds, 10% body fat by the end of the year. Or I want to be bench pressing two plates a side or whatever the thing is, right? I want to run a marathon. You chunk it down into how you're going to get there. And all the way back to the day, it's what's this week? Well, this week to get all the way there, I need to run. Let's use the marathon example. I was training for a marathon last year, remember? And this is how I did it. It's like, I need to run eight kilometers on Monday, 12 on Tuesday, 15 on Thursday, and like 15 on Saturday. And in between, there's like stretching and stuff. And like you add up the numbers and you build your way towards your goal. And so each day, you know, you wake up and you're like, okay, I need to run eight kilometers today. And I need to eat this much pasta and this much steak and I need to stretch. It tells you what you need to do. You don't have to think about it and figure it out because you've already broken the goal down so granularly that you know exactly what you need to do. Similar to you with your trainer, right? You have your own trainer and your nutritionist and your chef. You tell them what your goal is. They break it down for you. You wake up in the morning. I don't think you go down to the gym wondering what you're going to do, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> no, you sure fucking don't. You show up and it's like, oh, here's the plan today. This is what you're doing, Bashar. Sweat your ass off and go do the thing, right? 10 reps of this weight because it's been chunked down. So planning it out is the key. And then you just execute on it. I think a lot of people get stuck 
because they don't plan and then they get overwhelmed in the moment. Oh my God, I, I need to run a marathon. Oh my God, what am I going to do today? What, I got to run 50 miles or something? I can't do that. Then they stop. But if you broke it down, you have a plan. You just execute little one step at a time, one step at a time, and you get it done. No? Yes. Yeah. Chunking down, right? That's like the, if you want to Google at home, right? Chunking up and chunking down. You want to chunk things down into actionable steps. This is how, you know, people learn how to sell on Amazon, right? We chunk down the process of doing the things they need to do to sell products. Well, I think this is the one step that a lot of people miss because they, um, like something that I've learned recently, again, from Tony Robbins is he always <laughs> says, you know, figure out the outcome. Where do you want to be, right? Mm. Attach a, attach a, uh, uh, well, he doesn't say this. I actually learned this from, from Arnold. I'm not even going to try to say his, his last name, the bodybuilder. Schwarzenegger. Uh, you know, yeah, there you go. That one. Uh, <laughs> one time I watched an interview by him and he said, you always have to set a timeline to your goals. Otherwise, there is no sense of urgency. Because if you say that I want to, you know, make $100,000. Okay, well, you're 25 years old. Mm. By the time, you know, life expectancy is what, 79, 84? By mm. the time you're 84, you're probably going to have made $100,000, right? But it's like setting up that that timeline. I want to make $100,000 in the next 12 months, in the next 18 months, whatever the, the, the number is. Yeah. So figuring out the outcome, what is the outcome, add a timeline to it. And then, as you said earlier, why, why do you want to do it? It has to be an emotional thing. That's going to move you attach a why to it, multiple whys if possible, and then figure out the house. But I think Aaron, what happens a lot of times is that people look at the outcome. Like I want to be a millionaire. I think two things happen. Number one, they don't ch chunk it down. Number two, it's too fucking vague. Yeah. It's too vague. It's not specific. It's not chunked down because like, I want to be a millionaire. Okay. Last month you made $3,500. You're looking around, you're hanging out with a bunch of losers. You know, your, your mom and dad maybe are fighting or something every day. You know, you're, you're going out. There is, there's a bunch of shit. You, you turn on the news and they'll, you know, the world is ending and, 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 you know, uh, climate is whatever is, is going to happen in 12 years. And, you know, politicians are like going crazy against each other and stuff like that. And you're like, well, how the fuck am I going to do that? Mm. Right. And then you go to Instagram and then all these assholes are showing up, you know, in Lamborghinis and stuff like that. And it's like, well, I'm never going to be able to do that. So what you're going to default to is this is a lie. This is bullshit. Mm. You know, I'm never going to get there. And the reason why I can say that is because this was literally me seven years ago. When my restaurant burned down, I was like, this is a fucking lie. This is bullshit. Mm. Right. I've been busting my ass working 120 hours a week for the last three fucking years. And this is what I have to show for it. This is bullshit. This isn't reality. This is reality. Mm. You know? Um, so the, the thing that I want to pivot to and I want to ask you is how do you come out of that like spiral, that like negative feedback spiral that is very possible that a lot of people watching this could either be in or could be going into or will probably experience in their lives? Oh, man. I, I, I can only speak from my own experience on that. So I'll, I'll go back to the time when I was on the island. I had no money. I had no income. And I had no 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 plan, no future, no nothing. And I had about this like 30, 60 day sort of time between where everything went away and where I had the epiphany of like, I'm going to make a change now. I had about a, say, let's say 60 days there of like thinking about this shit. And what I did was number one, I got a mentor. It's the first thing I did. I didn't have money. How the fuck did I do that? I got resourceful. Getting resourceful is entrepreneurial. That's what you have to do. So sidebar on this, before I get into how I got out of the spiral, how did I get resourceful? I had coconut milkshake stands that was for the tourists, but the tourists were gone. So I took the milkshake stands, I bundled it up into like a little franchising sort of company, and I sold it to a guy who could then take it to a different island and build his own franchising milkshake business. 
Okay, so I turned like four or five of these little milkshake stands, which were worth nothing. They're fiberglass and like a couple of coconuts. But I packaged it in such a way that I explained to him how franchising worked and I helped him get the license for it. And I said, you take that to your island and you can sell these to people as franchises and you can make money off of them doing the work for you and you can build more and I'll teach you the business model. And I did. And so that's how I got the money, right? I got a thousand, I don't know, $1,500 or something for it. I paid a thousand for a mentor and that mentor, sh shout out Darren, if you're watching, Darren Little, he explained to me the foundational principles of manifestation. Mm. He started in on quantum physics and he started teaching me about the foundational structure of quantum physics and the truth around emotion and how you can use it in your power. And I was like, this is fucking awesome. So in this moment, I was borderline depressed, totally broke, but I was finding a way to like get myself the energy to do something, right? I would literally have days where I didn't get out of bed at all. I would just lay there, like didn't eat, didn't nothing, just lay there, fucking pissed and sad. And so I got this guy, Darren, he taught me a couple things online about emotion. And one of the things he talked about was affirmations and energy. Now you can think all the woo woo shit you want. We can go deep off the cliff when it comes to affirmations and woo woo stuff. But I can tell you what I did was I got a list of affirmations, which I still have, by the way, I have them in my office back home. I made a list really long one. I laminated it and I made a bunch of copies and I put them all over my house. Okay. Everywhere I had the mirror, the doors, all over the place. There was just all these affirmations everywhere. And it was all things around like, I am strong. I am worthy. I am capable. Like all of these like power statements, you know? Mm. And I was like, this is weird, you know, like, but whatever, like the guy's a millionaire and he's telling me to do it. I'm like, fuck, I got nothing to lose here. <laughs> you know? Yep. So I started doing that and I enjoyed it. And so I learned some more stuff around the power of affirmations and speaking your truth into existence and believing in yourself and all this kind of stuff on a very like basic level. Like affirmations are like kindergarten of manifestation and like living your best life. But it's like, that's where you start usually, right? Yeah. Affirmations. And so I was doing that. And then I was starting to see results. Like I was feeling good about it and I was starting to be more positive about like my worthiness and my ability to actually do something new and scary, which is like an online business that I've never done. And so what I did was I took these affirmations and one day I got in state. So I was also following Tony Robbins at the time, right? I just read his like through two or three of his books back to back. I was just deep in the like new in the journey, right? Personal development, like, yeah, Tony Robbins. And it was like state change, state change. So one day I got these, these affirmations. I went outside on the deck with my dog <clears throat> and I was listening to music and I was fucking jumping around and getting my cells buzzing super high and just getting pumped, just fucking jacked up pumped. And I came inside and I had my headphones, the wired I, uh, like Apple ones for my phone. And I hit record on the voice note and I fucking screamed these affirmations from like a super powerful state. Mm -hmm. I am strong. I am powerful. And I just fucking went for it. Mm -hmm. Screaming. Recorded it. I took that recording. I listened to that fucking recording like five times a day for the next like four months. Nice. Always. In the morning, middle of the day, out for a walk, definitely before going to sleep. My own voice screaming powerful affirmations into my head. Yes. I don't know how much of a, a, a needle mover that was for me, but it was part of my, my potion. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reading books. I was surrounding myself with mentors on the internet, reaching out to people, learning from people. And I was having those fucking affirmations just smashing in my brain. Yes. And then cut to, yeah, two months, three months later, we had moved and uh, started the online business with you and the rest is history, you know? But that was the thing that got me out of the spiral. That got me from, I, I don't wanna say I was depressed. I don't know what that really feels like. I wasn't depressed. I was just feeling like funky. I didn't have much energy. 
And it got me from feeling like that to like, fuck yeah, let's go. Like I am fucking pumped right now. Let's yeah. do this shit. I don't know what this shit is, but let's do it. Yeah. Like I was excited and happy. Mm. And I think those had a big piece of it. You know, what's important that you just said that I want to go into is state change and oh, your man. state. Mm. Um, obviously, again, shout out to Tony Robbins. He's fucking <laughs> huge on that, right? He's huge yeah. on that. And, and if you have any of you that have been to St Tony Robbins event, um, you know, he gets you to dance and he gets you to jump and he gets you to do all this crazy shit, which could look weird as fuck at first. Yeah. When you're first attendant, it's like, what is this shit about? Like, this totally. is exactly how I felt when I first went in. And my first event was virtual. I'm like, where the fuck am I right now? Yeah, you know? me too. <laughs> right? I was fucking rattling the fucking apartment and bu bu bugging the neighbors downstairs, jumping yeah, up and like, down. Remember when we crazy. went to uh, to Russell's event and they were doing it? It was kind of like a weird version of it. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Like looking at each other like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> but then when you go to a Tony event, it's like just a different vibe. You know, it's just very genuine. And there is a science behind it. This is why yeah. he does it, mm. you know? I remember... Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had just came out of a Tony event and he does these incantations where he gets you in state and then he gets you to shout out these things and then they get into your body. And then what it does, it, it like it, um, it fires neurons in your brain that it associates these words and the way you say them with a certain state, a certain emotion, a certain like way that you feel. Hmm. And so now I do them every morning. I have three different incantations. One is the gladiator one that we did together in Business Mastery a couple yeah. months ago. And so I have three different inc uh, incantations that I do that I've learned from him that do different things for me. And I do them every single morning. And I remember the first time I did them, I went down to literally I did them and I went to the gym. And I remember my trainer was like, you must have gotten some really good sleep last night. I'm like, why? It's like, I don't know, bro. There's something fucking weird about you. I'm like, how weird? It's like, you're just like very like, there's so much energy coming out of you. You're like so into the fucking workout. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Yeah. You know? And Tony talks a lot about how the state that you're in determines the outcome and determines the kind of decisions that you make. Mm. Because the one thing that we like when your back's against the wall or when you're afraid or when you are anxious or when you are, you know, uh, 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 frustrated or whatever, whatever decision you make from that state usually mm. is the wrong decision. Yeah. And this is why it's important for you to change your state, because what that does, like, I'm pretty sure when you are fucking jacked up. Decisions that you're going to make from there, the clarity that you're going to have is completely different from when you're like sitting like this and you're oh, scared yeah. and you're fucking like, you know, you're all shriveled up. Yeah, It's a different mentality. It's a different state. The decisions you're going to make are completely different. Can you t talk a little bit more about that? Dude, fuck yeah. Well, <laughs> making decisions from a peak state, um, that's something that is absolutely game changing. You know, um, an example of this for me, this is something that happens to me almost every day now because I'm aware of it and I, I purposely kind of put myself there. So in the morning when I'm writing out my day, again, chunking down my goals and chunking down my day, I write out what are the three big things I need, like my, my outcomes for today. It can be a percentage of it, but like what are the outcomes that I need to get done today? And I write them down. And I'm like, okay, well, why are those important? And the why gets me in state. Like, I feel excited. You know, I'm like, oh, this is why. That's why. Like, I need to do this. Fuck yeah, I'm going to do it because of that. Yes, yes, feel good, feel good, feel good. Then I kind of like jump around a little bit. I'm usually kind of out um, back home. I'm on my deck, right? There's like a nice view and I'm kind of like jiving around, maybe have a cigar, a cup of coffee. And then I ask myself, well, how, how, how? And I, I just, it, things just start like flowing into you. Whereas if I just went and woke up and I was like, oh, how am I going to do that thing today? It wouldn't be there. But you get all pumped up and jacked up and all of a sudden it's like, you just start having ideas. And those are coming from a peak state. Another example is when I go to the gym, obviously you're in a super high vibe state after the gym, right? You just lifted a ton of weights, your body's under stress. Maybe you're on the treadmill or you're on the bike or you're doing some shit where you're just fucking sweating your ass off. You're at like 150 BPM for two hours. Your body is peaking, right? I go in the change room 
put on my bathing suit and I go out and I go directly into the cold shower and the sauna, right at the gym. Every single day, every single day, I'm laying in that sauna and I have to turn on my voice note on my phone, on my watch. I have like 500 voice notes here of myself having the most epiphany moments all about, you know, things that I can do for my family, ways I can improve my lifestyle, things I can do to help the BJKU team, ideas for our students, ways to improve the community, just things that are making my life, your life, everyone around me life better, just start fucking coming to me Mm. randomly. And it's because my body has been vibing so high and then I get in that cold ass shower and then I get in the sauna and I go back and forth, back and forth. And I'm in this crazy state. I'm red like a fucking tomato. And all these ideas are just coming to me and I just turn my voice on. I start, I whisper to it because it's a Swiss sauna. Like you can't be loud in there. I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, and then we're going to do this and then we're going to do that. And I'm just whispering to my watch like a fucking weirdo. But all these ideas come to you in in peak state. And then if you're going to make a decision from that place, like we talked about this the other time, right? Um, You get in that peak state and you ask yourself like, what's on my magic, uh, what's on my bucket or whatever. What did Tony say? My magic bucket or something? Yes. Yeah. And it's like, well, what are the things you really want in life? And he's like, but before we do this exercise, everybody get up. And you're like, you fucking get up and you jump and you dance. And it's like three minutes of pumping your arms. And then you sit down and he's like, now get in a better peak state sitting down. And you're like, holy fuck. And you're pumping your arms and you're bouncing around and shit. And now it's like, what do you want? And boom, you're there. Right. Yep. So if you're at home and you're trying to like decide what you want to do, do I want to quit my job? Do I want to marry this person? Do I want to like travel? Do I want to move? Do I want to start Amazon? Don't sit there like this, asking yourself the question, fucking go outside and do jumping jacks and look like a weirdo and get wild. Yes. Then sit down with a piece of paper and just put it on paper and just start letting your hand going and see what happens. Yep. Yeah, something that I started, uh, and I for a while there I was posting in that BJKU fam Slack channel that we have. Yeah. Um, the songs that I was listening to. So what I did is, um, I got very inspired a few weeks ago, and actually went on YouTube and I built me like this massive fucking playlist of like all these songs that I love. Nice. And um, and and you know, like I, I'm into like EDM and house music and stuff like that, and so I love me some like Calvin Harris, some you know, uh, 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 uh Steve Aoki, some uh, Martin Garrix. You know, I love these guys, right? Yeah. And so. What I do is in the morning as part of my morning routine, which is another thing that I want to get into is um, it's like I listen to some songs that like get me jacked up, like the Survivor, you know, uh, uh, Rocky Balboa song like that yeah. always gets me, you know, dun, and, dun, 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 right. Dun, dun, dun. Like, You're so fucking jacked fucking right now. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's like like literally right now, as you started saying it, like I got goosebumps all over my fucking body, you know, it's yeah. like when you hear these kinds of songs, like, how are you not supposed to get jacked up? Yeah. And so like, this is why people put music on when they go to the gym. Because yeah. that like, sometimes we don't like, there are so many things that we do on autopilot that we don't think of like why we do it. Mm. The reason why you put music on when you go to the gym and it's usually fucking like, hard you know rock and roll music or like you know crazy rap music or like edm or something like that you know you don't put fucking celine dion when you're at the gym no dude i listen to maybe do i don't know crazy you you don't put like meditation music when you're at the gym no hell no it's it's because like it gets your fucking body like jacked up it gets your your neurons fucking firing gets your cells like just like cracking Mm. and what that does it changes your physiology it changes your emotion and you just want to like push and yeah. so it's the same thing when, as you said, as like making when you're trying to make a decision, when you're trying to, uh, uh, um, when you find yourself, and literally what I've noticed is, bro, is you can change your state. You can go from apps because, see, the reason why I even got into all this bullshit, all this like crazy woo woo stuff that a lot of people are like saying, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Yeah. Is because I was on survival mode for two, three months. Because yeah. literally the only state that I was on for two, three months was anxious, freaking out, thinking about the fucking die in six months. Mm. That was the only emotional state that I was in for two, three months. And the reason why I found all this stuff was because I needed to way out of there. And what I realized is you can literally like this, you can go from fearful to fucking excited. Yeah. You can go from anxious 
to absolutely optimistic. You know, you can go from like my fault, my life is falling down to like, holy shit, I've got this. You mm -hmm. know, like I could do whatever I set my mind to. And so it's a, it's an immediate change that one can 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 create on themselves with very little effort. And um, and I don't know, I don't feel like a lot of people are talking about it, you know? Yeah, I do know. You know, you said morning routines, right? Yes. So for me, I mean, the, the whole idea of a morning routine, that's a whole nother fucking can of worms. I, I think a routine itself, the word routine is dangerous, but I think habits are important. Because mm. if you call it a routine and you miss it, you could feel the feeling of like, oh no, I didn't do my routine. Mm. I'm off today or uh, today's fucked. I didn't do my routine, which yes. is not true. It's not fucked. You just didn't do something, but you can still do everything amazing, right? The words we use create the emotions we feel, right? Exactly. So mm. it's like, I'm cultivating, like I like to think to myself, like I'm cultivating the habit of X. And so today I'm going to do X to help push the needle towards that habit being solidified. Mm. If I don't do it, not a problem. Write it down on my <laughs> nightly review as a zero so that I'm aware of it. Watch the pattern. Pattern recognition is everything. And then work towards it again tomorrow. It's a new fucking day. The day starts at zero again. So this routine stuff to me feels dangerous. But um, to your thought there about um, the the woo-woos of of feeling and in the morning how can you adjust your feeling for the day or whatever like so for me when i wake up in the morning the first thing that i write down again this is in our, our book that we have right with our company and our team it's like how do you feel like immediately how do you feel and there's all these emotions there and you circle one. It's like sad, anxious, happy, excited, you know, all these different like rainbow of emotions. How do you feel? And you circle one. And after that, it asks you, why do you think you feel this way? And so if it's a negative emotion of some sort, which for me, a lot of times in the morning it is. I don't know about you guys watching this or you, Bashar, but like for me, I have like a cycle of in the morning, it's like, fuck, world's crashing. In the night, like as the day progresses, I gain momentum and, and like strength and positivity towards like, yeah, you know, by the time I go to bed, it's like, we're fucking taking over the world. And then I wake <laughs> up and I'm like, oh my God, shit's hitting the fan so bad. And then I, I, it's just like this cycle for me always. Mm. Anyways, in the morning, I'll circle like anxious or stressed or something like that. Usually a lot of times it's like happy and excited, but mostly it's, it's on the negative side. And then I'll add it. It says, why do you feel this way? And I'll be like, well, this happened and that happened and this is going on. And I thought about that and it's making me feel anxious or this making me feel stressed or whatever. And so you put that out there. So you're again, aware of your emotion, where you're at, but now we want to flip this and look into the positive. Right. And so it's like the next question is, what are three things you're grateful for? So now it's, it's very interesting how this works for me. I say, let's just use an example. You wake up anxious, circle it. Why do you feel anxious? Well, I feel anxious because of X, Y, Z um, scenario or circumstance this week that I'm fucking anxious about. And I'm not sure how it's going to go. And it's affecting the outcome of this project. And I'm like really worried about it. Like that's what I'll write down. What are you grateful for? Number one, the problem I just said, because I'm learning X, Y, Z from it. Yes. We're growing from it. Like immediately it's flipped to a positive. Yes. And that's how, that's the whole thing. It's like, you're failing forward, you're learning and you're growing from these obstacles. And that way of like journaling it out in the morning, it flips your brain immediately from, I feel sad because this is happening. What are you grateful for? Well, I'm grateful for this is happening because I'm going to learn from it. And then the next question is, well, what fucking three things are you going to do today to make that shit happen? And you're like, oh man, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm gonna do and by the end of that page, you're already feeling fucking great. You've only been awake 10 minutes. Right. Yeah. 
it's interesting how you can reprogram your 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 brain just like this. Mm, totally. Right? Yes. Mm, that's interesting. You have, to be found, intentional. you have to be intentional. 100%. You got to own that shit. You got to drive your brain. 100%. Yeah. And because if if you don't because if you don't get in the in the driver's seat, it will get in the driver's seat. And as I mentioned earlier, your brain has a bias for negativity. 100%. Its job is not to make you happy, it's your fucking job to make yourself happy. Oh, you just fucking gave me the the aha. That's why it's that's why I wake up negative. Cuz the brain all night long, it's like working on some some bad scenarios, right? right? Even though I'm very intentional with what I listen to and what I think before I go to sleep. Yes. I have like guided sleep meditations i listen to my wife and i every fucking night for the last like four years we listen mm -hmm. to the guided meditations in bed and it, it it plays while you're sleeping and then it turns itself off it's like a 45 minute thing or so mm -hmm. and so it's like it's it's drenching your brain in this like positive restful sort of state so you're trying to get your subconscious into this state where it's working on itself and it's positive but obviously <laughs> throughout the night shit goes a bit sideways and you wake up fucking anxious yeah. But then it's your job to make yourself happy. You nailed that shit. That helped me a lot. Thank you. Yeah. So, so one thing that I've realized is that, um, number one, how you go to sleep is very important and, mm. and there's a science behind it. Book recommendation as a man thinketh. Oh it's yeah. It's a tiny book. And, and I, this is book number five. So for all the execs in our company, I have five books that I'm going to recommend to all of you guys. And this was going to be book number five. It's a tiny book. Game if you're changer. watching this, you got to fucking get it by James Allen. I think his name is. Yeah. Uh, it's like what, like four, 40 pages or something Super like that. Thin. Yeah. Very thin. And Dude, so I had that audio book. Some... Sorry. I had that audio book on repeat for like a year. It's for so real. good. It's so good. It's dude. so fucking good. It's, it's so, so fucking good. good. Yeah. So he, there's a science behind why it's important. The last few minutes of when you're going to sleep to be focused and to be very intentional yet, 90% of, of, of the world, what they do is they're fucking watching TV. They're watching some drama, dramatic, uh, you know, uh, show. They're watching uh, the news or some shit like that. Or they're scrolling through uh, Instagram or TikTok, and that's how they fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And this is why this is dangerous, and it's scientific. So from that book, what it talks about is um, your conscious mind. And so we all have a conscious and a subconscious, right? When you sleep, it's the only time that your conscious and your subconscious merge together. Your conscious, think about it as the the mature, you know, the mature person, the 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 you know, 30 year old that's mature, 40 year old <clears throat> that's been through life, they have all the 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 everything kind of under control, right? The unconscious or the subconscious is the little child, right? The little playful child, the the visionary that likes to create the world, that likes to do this, that likes to do that, right? Yeah. When the conscious and the subconscious merge together, the conscious is taking everything that it's conscious of, that it's seeing, to the subconscious. And it's taking all this drama, all this negativity, all this bullshit, and giving it to the subconscious. The subconscious is the one that controls our lives, not the conscious. Because mm -hmm. the conscious is only able to, 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 to keep hold of like three, four, five, ten things. The subconscious can keep hold of and store millions and billions of information and little bits and pieces and, and, and be aware of all these things. So when you're going to sleep, you're literally taking all the negativity and then dropping it in the subconscious bucket. And then now the subconscious is literally driving your fucking life. Yeah. Right. And so that's why it's very important that when you go to sleep, the last 20, 30, 45 minutes, I try for an, at least an hour, no TV, no electronics. No. Um, oh, no. Obviously no blue light because I want to sleep well. Mm. And, uh, and then it's always about positive. Even when I, when I'm talking to my wife, it's always about like positive stuff. I'm always like, you know, being playful. We play cards sometimes or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and what I do when I go to sleep is there is a prayer that I learned at another Tony's event. <laughs> um, I think of a person, I forgot what the, what the, what the prayer is called. It's from some Indian tribe or something like that. And the prayer is, thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. I love you. It's four things. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Mm. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And you think of a person 
and you pray that to them. You say that to them. Again, this has nothing to do if you're a Christian, Muslim, Jew. It has nothing to do with your your you know where you're uh, originally from. But it's uh, uh, it's something that puts you in that positive state. And also, what I've realized and what I've learned is that when we like this is why we're fulfilled when we contribute to other people. When we, like because we'll do more for other people than we'll do to ourselves. Haven't mm -hmm. you noticed that? How oh, like hundred percent? We'll literally like go miles to do something for other people before we do it for ourselves. All day long. Yep. Totally. Um, let's stick on sleep for a sec because sleep is. I love. I love like. Um, optimizing things or attempting to optimize things or look at how you like can do things better. Hacking, you know, biohacking. Yeah. Biohacking shit. It's in, yeah, it, yeah, I, exactly. I like it. And one of the rocks I have, my personal rocks this year is, um, again, goals for the year, right? Write them down and be fucking intentional about them. One of my goals for this year, a personal goal that's nothing to do with the company and work and stuff is to optimize my health, which is quite vague. But if I narrow it down, it was cold exposure, heat exposure, and sleep. Those are like the three things that I'm like focused on. So I just said a second ago, I sauna and cold shower four or five days a week now, right? Nice. I intentionally went and found a gym that has a spa where I can do that every day. So I've been on that and I'm loving it. It's fucking awesome. I feel great. The other one is sleep. So it's like optimizing for sleep. You can go down crazy rabbit holes with sleep. Right. And I've been down a few of them. Uh, I wear this whoop band, you know, shout out. Whoop is awesome. Oral ring is also good. I like the band because I don't rings. I don't know. I can't lift weights and stuff with them, but I like the whoop band. I've got a couple of the guys on the team with the whoop. We have a little team inside the whoop community and it tracks your, your activities, but I focus on the sleep part of it. And so when you sleep is when your brain right? In, in, in deep sleep and your REM cycles and things is when your brain is, is rebuilding itself, right? It's when your muscles are rebuilding. It's when your body is bu building itself back up. That's what sleep is for, regenerative. Yes. So it's like, you might as well do that the best way possible, right? So some of the things that I've done to optimize sleep have been um, making sure that the room is relatively cool, right? We have a, not a weighted blanket, but it's a quite a heavy duvet that's like it, it's weighted on you. Yeah. Um, sort of it, it sort of replicates like a womb kind of a feeling, like you're feeling secure on that. Um, going to bed at the same time every night, or at least very close to it. Waking up at roughly the same time every day. The blue light glasses that you have on right now, I wear those at around 7 p.m. onwards. These really red ones that are pretty fucking hard to see through. Yeah. Um, definitely no news or social media and shit. Like we don't have fucking TV or social media or any of that stuff anymore. Right. So it's like none of that inputs, um, definitely doing some reading, some journaling, uh, breathing exercises. I love doing breath work. Yeah, um, you've, uh, you've revolutionized the company with that. Yeah, totally. And so like doing a lot of that stuff, um, and intentionally setting in, setting my intention that like, okay, I'm going to switch off my computer and switch off my brain. I'm going to switch off all my stuff. And I literally have an alarm on my phone that goes off at a certain time every night. And it plays this really like lovely yoga song. Mm. And my wife and I love these certain yoga artists, this lady. And it's like this really like da, 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 super yogi song. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I'm doing, man. Like, I can be deep in work and that song goes off and I immediately, it changes my state. I'm like, Oh, you know, time to chill, time to switch off. And that yep. it goes off. And from there forward, I have like an hour, hour and a half to totally unwind, maybe do a bit of stretching or something. I don't do as much of that as I should, but, and then go to bed with this like totally wound down vibe. And then you can check your score on your app and you can see how your sleep score is doing. You can mm. check your resting heart rate, your HRV, your blood pressure, all these different things. And I'm tracking it because what's tracked is measured goals. Yes. From January till now, it's early March, my resting heart rate has gone way down. My HRV, which is a super important metric, used to be terrible. Now it's like average, right? And I'm working towards good. And it's all because of sleep, mm. you know, and heat exposure and cold exposure. So 
to me, if you're not optimizing like the one third of your life where you're sleeping, you're kind of missing, you're missing the ball there a bit, you know? Yeah. And it's one something thing I never that I thought wanna, of before at all. Yeah. One thing that I want to add on here that's very important is, and this is something that I, that I had to become very, like, very, um, very clear on is the actual sleep. Hmm. Like, because someone that like could be listening to, to obviously like our lives is all around this stuff. And we've been deep down this shit for like a long time and stuff like yeah. that. But like an everyday person that is maybe watching us or listening to us can also sometimes get overwhelmed and say, well, it's fucking good for you because you know, you, you work from home and your wife is into this shit. And you know, I've got five <laughs> kids and I have, you know, this thing, yeah. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning and, and, you know, I have two jobs or, you know what I mean? And they can like get overwhelmed. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Because like, if I was watching this six, seven years ago, I'd be like, man, go fuck yourself. What are you talking about? Mm. You know, like chef, you got a trainer. Okay. Yeah. It's fucking, it's, 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 it's cool for you fucking rich assholes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Built it. Exactly. That's yeah. absolutely. But like, if you just start with the basics, mm. like when it comes to sleep, if you just prior to prioritize the fucking sleeping time. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was at a Tony's event. And if anyone has been to a Tony's event, these are 12, 14, 16 hour fucking days. I don't give a fuck who was coming in. I made sure that I left that motherfucker at 10 o'clock and I went to sleep and I slept my seven and a half, eight hours every single night. The mm -hmm. next morning, Everyone is like, and breakfast, like, oh my God, I feel like shit. And I'm there like, doo, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah. feeling like a million bucks because I had my eight hours of sleep. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I do all the stuff that you talked about, but I think if people just focus on the basics and also not beat themselves up. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like you can't set too many rules. You can't go from whatever your life looks like now to try to become like Aaron. Mm. because Aaron didn't get here overnight. Like how long has it been since you actually became aware of all this stuff or maybe heard the first time someone talked about this or whatever to where you are right now optimizing and like looking at every single thing and whatever. Yeah. Oh man. Four years. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Totally dude. hundred percent. And it's still fucking a shit show all over the place. I get overwhelmed with it still. And I follow guys who optimize to the max. And when I see them, I'm like, holy shit, I'm nowhere near that. You know, uh, a couple of very simple ones. I mean, if you're watching and you're like, man, I should optimize my sleep, right? I'm sure we can agree on a few very simple ones, the basics, right? Going to bed at the same time every night, getting up at the same time every morning. 100%. Getting your rhythm in, in, in check is just, that's the simplest one there is, right? Yes. Don't eat or drink any food roughly three hours before you go to sleep. Yes. I have an alarm on my phone for that as well. Anybody can do that. Set an alarm. It's like you go to bed at, you know, 11 o'clock, set your alarm for seven. No food, no drinks. And the reason is because your kidneys and stuff are all working your digestive system. It'll make you get up and pee. Your body will be doing all this extra work, this extra energy will be expelled. You don't need that shit. So yep. go to bed at the same time. Don't eat or drink three hours before. That's a great fucking start. You know, blue light glasses. You can buy that shit on Amazon for five bucks. Put that shit on when the sun goes down. Start there. And you know, one thing, and I know this is difficult for a lot of people, if I had not had a, a major health thing that was very triggering, I probably wouldn't have stopped it either. And I know you stopped it a few years ago, mm. is drinking. Dude, yeah. it made a huge difference for me in all of my life. And here's what I mean. Um, since, I don't know, since I could ever remember, like probably started like 10, 12 years ago, even my friends used to make fun of me, you know, like, I used to have headaches all the fucking time, mm. like headaches all the fucking time. And usually it would happen when I drink and or smoke hookah at the same time. Right. I would just have these massive headaches and I would literally be popping like Tylenol and Advil like four or five times a week. Yeah. Since my seizure until now, I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking hookah. I stopped all the acidic, like, as, what, what, how do you say acidic. it? Acidic. Yeah. Acidic, like input into my body everything became a lot more like controlled. My sleep is better. Um, and my headaches are gone. Now I do still get headaches when I'm in front of the computer for, for long periods of time, 
Uh, and this is why I have like a screen that's like far away from me and I sit on my computer, you know, on my desk and I don't look at my computer. I look at the screen far away and I wear mm -hmm. these glasses all the time. But from like actual input into my body, I have not had a, a an over-the-counter uh, uh, drug or a prescription drug in like eight, nine months. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's never happened to me. And so on top of what Aaron just said, if you can actually do that, or at least don't go cold turkey. If you if you like drinking and stuff like that, just decrease it a little bit. If you drink two, three times a week, what if it's just once a week? Mm. If you drink three, four cups every time you go out, we drink one or two cups, right? And then just kind of little by little. What do you think mm. about that? Because I know you you also kind of went cold turkey when it came to drinking. Fuck. How many goddamn hours do we have to talk? We're going to go into drinking? Holy shit. <laughs> get, your, get your popcorn. No, I won't, I won't go too crazy on it. We can, we can go there another day. Cause there's lots that I can talk about with alcohol and stuff. But the gist of this for me is for a solid 15 years of my life was university, corporate life, party organizer. Those are the three stages of 15 years of my life. So like, what do you do in those stages? Right. School, university in the United States, it's a party. And like, maybe you go to class sometimes. I got C's and D's the whole way through, right? <laughs> just partying and like just scraping by. I was on an athletic scholarship. Thank God the coaches helped me get through some classes. Going corporate, you're so fucking run down and tired from the corporate grind. I worked in a bank. I worked in insurance and I worked in a hotel, all corporate. You're just like... You can't wait to have a drink after work because number one, it's normal. It's what everybody does because they're all fucking hating life. And number two, you just can't wait to numb the anger that you had from the day because yes. you're like, oh my God, I hated that so much. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, okay. At least I feel kind of better a little bit now. Right? right. And then when you're organizing events and parties and like beach resorts and stuff, like obviously you're just always sipping on something. I would drink a gin and tonic like for breakfast when I was doing that shit. Literally, that's not even a joke. So I was just drinking all the time. It was just the normal thing to do. But I got to a point where, um, yeah, it was, it was all in this sort of same time when I was learning about affirmations and I was reading Tony Robbins and I wanted to transition online and like move to a different country and take a different route to be the provider for my family. The drinking for me, when I would drink a lot, I would kind of get out of control, hmm. you know? And like my friends, the nickname they had for me, if you guys are watching this, fuck, and you're, you're going to laugh. The, the nickname my buddies had for me was Ruckus. Ruckus? The Ruckus. What the fuck is that? It's just someone who like wrecks stuff. Like, <laughs> like you're a ruckus, right? So, because like I would, you know, I'd be, I, I just would be rowdy, you know? like aggressively rowdy, like not in a bad way. Like I wouldn't go like punch people and shit, but I'd like, you know, playfully push people over. Like, you know, Oh, you, you told me that you told yeah. me that. Uh, lot, yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Okay. So it's just like being a bit of a dick, you know? Yeah. And, and I just, when I started going down the personal development journey and like becoming the observer, when you're actually really taking a, a good look at yourself for real, like, Hey man, where are you at in your life? What are you up to? How do you act around people? You know, how do people look at you? How do you look at yourself? Like, if you didn't know you, what would you think about you? You're asking yourself all these questions, which is like the beginning of self-awareness. I just didn't fucking like the answers I got back. Mm. It was just straight that, you Inquiry, know? Inquiry, huh? Sorry? Inquiry, right? Yes. And I just, I just was like, well, that's not, again, it's the values thing. I looked at who I want to become and what I want to do. And I was like, well, this fucking guy is not going to get me there. The ruckus is a ruckus. That's not this guy over here. It's not the same human. So one day, you know, after like very, very little contemplation, I just one day decided I'm not fucking drinking anymore because I had an epiphany. And again, it comes from the self-development, the inner work. You're thinking, you're meditating, you're writing about yourself, you're learning about yourself in real time. And I just realized, I was like, the only time I'm that, like, sort of the guy that I don't like, the guy that I don't want to be around, the only time I'm him is when I'm drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I just thought to myself, I was like, you know, 
it's like I have these like two versions of me, right? The version that you know, the version that you see here, and then the other version. And I was like, the only time that guy comes alive is when there's alcohol in his system. Interesting. So I was like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to starve that version. If he doesn't get his food, he's, he's going to die. And I was like, well, that's a very simple fucking answer. If I don't want that guy to be alive, I need to starve him. Well, how do I starve him? Well, I just fucking cut off his food and the food mm -hmm. is alcohol. Mm. And that's it. And just from that moment forward, I was just like, well, I'm, I'm not feeding that guy anymore. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And, and I met lots of people who, you know, stopped drinking or I have buddies who went through like the AA stuff and everyone has their own journey with it. You know, some people fight it every day and it's like, yeah, one day at a time I'm, I'm struggling not to drink and stuff. Other guys are just like, yeah, I just don't give a fuck anymore. Like, I don't give a fuck anymore at all. Like, I don't care. Yeah. And I remember at the beginning, it was like, my thoughts were like, how can I go to parties? How can I go to dinner events? How can I do this stuff if I'm not drinking? Like, it's weird. They're so much funner, huh? They're so much. You know, now they are. Yeah. Yeah, that's and what I I'm actually saying. fucking remember what happens. It's great. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I remember that was a, that was a limiting belief I had. I was like, dude, I'll never be able to be fucking social again. Yes. Because I was not only drinking was like a comforting thing or whatever, but like I would be the guy who's drinking the most. Like I'd be the guy ordering the drinks and getting the bottle and pouring it for people and like pushing people to drink more. I was yep. that guy. Yeah, that was me. Exactly. Yeah. Shots, yeah. fucking shots. Come on. What yeah. do you mean you don't want shots? Let's go. That guy. And I'm like, yeah. if I'm not that guy, who the fuck am I? What am I going to do with these parties? Mm. And I was scared of that shit. And then... I don't know. You just grow with it over time, I guess. And then I realized like, I'm not doing it for anybody else. It's just like, I don't want to feed that guy. Mm. And now I just don't like, I have zero desire to drink anything ever. It's not because I don't like it or I don't like the taste or I don't, I look down on drinking. Like, I don't give a fuck if people drink is like get wasted right beside me. I don't give a fuck at all. I'll pay for it. It's awesome. Do whatever you're doing, you know? But just for me, I'm just like, I'll even go for dinner with my, my parents or my wife's parents or something, right? And they'll be like, oh, we're having steak and they'll get a bottle of red wine. Do you want a sip of wine for cheers? No. Like, I'm not going to be a fucking wasted asshole at dinner with my wife's parents. I'm going right. to have this much wine and like sip it and have a steak. But do I do it? No. I just don't want it <laughs> i don't know what what it is i have a sparkling water with lemon if we ever go out for drinks sparkling water and lemon that's my drink that's right yeah and you, you know, know that I, when we were out that's all i would ever drink right <laughs> yeah i mean it, the first time we went out i was like well fuck man just drink just have a drink you yeah, know and then yeah. and then obviously after i had my seizure and now it's different but um it's been uh that it's was, been sorry, is, sorry to interrupt was that sorry to interrupt that was in hollywood right we were we were at Quantum in LA and we went out for steak yes. uh, in Hollywood. We I was like, oh, let's go to Hollywood and let's go through Compton and check out what yeah. it looks like. And <laughs> <laughs> we were in this Cadillac and everyone's like, we're not fucking going through Compton. It's sketchy <laughs> as fuck. And I was like, come on, man, shit. So we went to Hollywood and I was, man, Hollywood, it didn't look like what I thought it would, man. I just saw it was <laughs> dirty and there was, it was like, oh. Yeah, and it's, we, it's beat up just super beat up and then we went in that 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 really suave place went upstairs we had a big um, steak some place oh yeah you're talking about uh uh Ma maestros maestros Ma maestros it was delicious They're opening one here yeah. oh it's a great spot but yeah well, you guys were drinking old fashions in the bar while we're waiting for the table right yep and our yep. buddies were coming the influencer guys and and the business owners and stuff and everyone's drinking yep. old fashions and i had my my lemon water sparkling san pellegrino going that's and everyone was on my case a little bit, right? A little bit. Yep. And yep. I, I just, I just, it's, it's like, it's like if I said to you right now, like, put on a white fucking shirt, you'd be like, I don't, go no, fuck yourself. <laughs> I don't feel like putting on a white shirt. What the fuck are you talking about? It's like, have a drink. I'm like, nah, you have a drink. You have two. Have mine, bro. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. I miss me an old fashioned sometimes. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, and sometimes, and every time we're out, me and Roweda, whenever I see them, <clears throat> you sniff it, don't you? 
Yeah, and whenever I see someone order, I'm like, babe, look at that. Look at that, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's funny because neither of us used to, neither me or her used to drink uh, sparkling water. Mm. And then after I stopped drinking, she also slowed down on drinking because she's like, well, I don't want to fucking drink when we're out and you're not drinking. Getting loose. So now, yeah, now we're <laughs> always drinking sparkling water. In fact, our fridge is always filled with half Fiji and half San Pellegrino. Mm. You know? Nice. Yeah. And, um, and you know, there is just something about it when you start making those habits of like those shifts of like, you know, it's good for your body. Like we all know that drinking is bad for your body, whether you want to, you know, whether you want to believe it or not, it mm. is right. It's like smoking. Absolutely. We know that smoking is bad for your body. Now, you know, I used to say, well, I don't smoke cigarettes. I just smoke hookah. Well, that's fucking worse, actually. Yeah. You know, I say it with cigars. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I know? don't inhale it. It's like a, a one cigar is like a whole fucking pack. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, shit. Exactly. But it's like we know these things are, are bad. We do them. But when we stop doing them, what it does is it creates that discipline and it creates that like I'm doing something good for my body, actually, you mm -hmm. know, and and like something about that, like self-confidence, that self-esteem that gets built, that it's like, yeah, I'm saying no. Like, as you're saying, they invite you. It's like, you know, like for me, it's like, well, yeah, it's a health thing, but it really isn't. But for you, it's like, no, I just don't want to do it. And you still, you know, like, you know that you can do it, but you still don't do it. I bet somewhere deep down that actually makes you feel fucking good about yourself. Doesn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I haven't really thought about that. And again, it's like, I'm not saying I never will drink again. That's another thing. Like, I just, I'm just not drinking right now. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I don't know, fucking a month from now, I might be sitting at dinner with my wife and I might order a glass of red wine. Yeah. I don't know. I just yeah. know that I got to a point where I realized my values and, <clears throat> and who I was acting in the moment and who I wanted to be. One of the things that was fucking that up completely was alcohol. I just knew that was one of the things. And I was like, well, if I can control that, that's a good start. So fuck that. Get it out of here. And I just, that's kind of where I'm still at, you know? I, I don't think it would affect me the same way it did before. I have no reason to go off the rails and party and shit. Yeah. But I just, for now, that's how it is. It's, it's much like the routine. It's like if you get stuck into believing a routine is going to save you and if you miss it, you're fucked. The same is with me with alcohol. Like I'm not saying... I will never have a sip of alcohol my entire life again or else. Like if I say that to myself, I'm putting myself in a, in a, in a box, which is not what I want to do. Mm. I want the freedom to be able to do whatever the fuck I want. I can do whatever I want. I can go get a bottle of wine right now and chug it. Right. Interesting. I could I'm not going to don't feel like it. I might, <laughs> but I just haven't. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting, huh? It's uh it's like the rules that you put on your on yourself can also uh determine how and, and when you experience like experience joy or experience happiness in life or whatever. It's kind of like as you said, because it's like the morning routine. I know that was something that you told me when when I was like, you know, creating my morning routine and stuff like that. You said, Hey, look, like don't don't get too fixated on I need to fucking do my morning routine and I need to do it in order and I need to do it every single day or else my day is going to be shitty Yeah. because I realized that I was kind of going in that and I was like beating up myself whenever I didn't go through it or like if I wake up a little later, you know, mm. I would beat up myself. And I think that's also another thing that someone can get into while they are trying to maybe get out of that, like that spiral, that negative feedback loop, trying to get over that, over to like, this other like discipline land of like, I, you know, I'm not, I'm a crusher. I'm going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's also very important to be careful about like the kinds of rules and the kinds of um, uh, I guess, yeah, rules that we put on ourselves to experience pleasure or to experience whatever. Right. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Expectations, man. Yes. You have to set your, you have to set the right expectations and uh, be flexible in the way you get to them, you know? Yes. Right. So it's like small wins is the goal. It's not, I'm going to fucking change. Like you could be listening to this right now at home. Right. And be like, oh man, I'm going to Google like optimizing sleep. 
I'm going to fucking build a year long goal calendar. Like we went through a bunch of shit to optimize your life today, right? Don't try and go do all that shit in one day because tomorrow when you wake up and you don't do it all, you're going to feel like you failed at it. Yes. And you didn't set the right expectation for yourself. Pick a couple things, commit to them and do your best to hit them. And if you miss it, learn from the lesson. Why did you miss it? Okay. Well, you didn't go to bed on time and you slept in. Okay. I recognize that in myself. I'm not gonna beat myself up about it, but like, why did that happen? Let me think back. Okay. Well, actually I know why, because I was going to wind down at nine o'clock and go to bed at 10, but at nine 15, I turned on fucking CNN or Fox news or whatever. And I watched that shit for 30 minutes and it kept me up and wired. I didn't fall asleep. Didn't do my meditation. Okay. Well, that's why. So now you learn the lesson. Well, X led to Y get rid of X not let's build this massive plan and expect yourself to just hit it on the T every day for the rest of your life. It's not happening. And I don't care what any of these fucking self-help guru people, they're just like, push through it and do it anyway. Like get it done no matter what. Dude, welcome to fucking reality. That's Instagram land. You know, like I love those guys, you know, Jocko and I, I love those guys, but they fuck up too. Trust me. You know, you talked about your buddy on Instagram. He's like, I would love that life. Is he really living it? It's like people talk about discipline and like, I never miss a day like David Goggins and stuff. And I love those guys and their message. But I think it's also slightly dangerous because people are now setting expectation that if they miss it, they are bad. Now they're focusing on the bad. Why not focus on why you missed it and learn from it? That's the positive. But if you tell yourself missing it is bad, now you're just bad. And now you're going to go in this negative spiral where you're bad and you don't do shit and you miss it again and you miss it again. You start this like domino effect of negativity. But if you set the expectation of I'm going to do my best, I'm going to learn from it every day. Then you're going to be in a positive progressive spiral and you'll eventually get closer to your goal every day. One step forward, one step back, two steps forward, two steps forward, three steps back, five steps forward, one step back, slowly, slowly making your way there. Yeah. And I think we should end it right here. Good call, dude. It's been uh, three and a half hours. 